please stand for a moment, or excuse me, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for those who have passed away in our community, including Bob Foley, Jim Connor, and Phaedra Camille. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Here. Mr. Schuster? Here. Dr. Rothschild? Here. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Mr. King? Here. <clears throat> I know we have a few proclamations uh, this evening. I'd like to ask uh, Mark Loretti and Paul Devine, please come forward. I know that Mr. McAndrew and I think Mr. Schuster are going to be reading these proclamations this evening. Whereas the Council of the City of Scranton is desirous of honoring Mark Loretti, West Scranton Intermediate School swim coach, who is responsible for helping to save the life of a student, and whereas on Friday, February 24th, 2023, at approximately 15.05 hours, Mark Loretti arrived at West Scranton Intermediate School for swim practice. <clears throat> Excuse me. And whereas Mr. Loretti noticed a commotion in the pool area and immediately responded to determine what was happening. And whereas Mr. Loretti observed a colleague administering cardiopulmonary resuscitation to a student. And whereas Mr. Loretti checked the student for a pulse and quickly relieved his colleague, who was becoming fatigued, and continued administering CPR. The student regained consciousness and began breathing on their own. And whereas Mr. Loretti's quick thinking and immediate action in effectively using CPR resulted in saving the life of the student and averting a potential uh, tragic outcome. Whereas Scranton City Council, the administration, students, families, and staff of West Scranton Intermediate School and all the citizens of the city of Scranton are very grateful to Mark Loretti for his efforts, not only for his actions on February 24th, 2023, but on every day um, throughout the year. Now therefore, be it resolved that on Thursday, March 16th, 2023, Scranton City Council wishes to honor Mark Loretti for his life-saving skills and heroic actions during this event. Be it further resolved that this proclamation be made a permanent part of the minutes of this council and lasting tribute to Mark Loretti. Whereas the Council of the City of Scranton is desirous of honoring Paul Devine, West Scranton Intermediate School health and physical education teacher who is responsible for helping to save the life of a student. And whereas on Friday, February 24th, 2023, at approximately 15.05 hours, Paul Devine called for his class to exit the swimming pool. And whereas Mr. Devine was assisting a student when he heard a call from another student stating that a classmate was down inside the pool and he immediately sprang into action. And whereas Mr. Devine dove into the pool and brought the unconscious student to the surface and out of the pool, whereas Mr. Devine then initiated several cycles of CPR prior to being relieved by a colleague. The student regained consciousness and began breathing on their own. Whereas Mr. Devine's quick thinking and immediate action and effectively using CPR resulted in saving the life of another student and advertently a potentially tragic outcome. The city, the council of the city of Scranton, the administration, students, families and staff of West Scranton Intermediate School and all of the citizens of the city of Scranton are grateful to Paul Devine for his efforts, not only for his actions on February 24th, but on every day throughout the year. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that Thursday, March 16th, 2023, Scranton City Council wishes to honor Paul Devine for his life-saving skills and heroic actions during the event. Be it further resolved that this proclamation be made a permanent part of the minutes of council and a lasting tribute to Paul Devine. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, correspondence received from City Business Administration dated March 8, 2023, regarding updated payroll preparation tax collections. 3B, correspondence received March 7, 2023, from OECD regarding code enforcement report for City Council. 3C, single tax office city funds distributed comparison report, 2023, 2022, year-to-date, March 4th, 2023. 3D, emergency declaration received March 13th, 2023, from City Administration regarding snow emergency. 3E, correspondence dated March 14th, 2023, from OECD regarding OpenGov January-February code enforcement report. 3F, correspondence dated March 14th, 2023, from OECD regarding code enforcement report for City Council. 3G, minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held February 15, 2023. 3H, minutes of the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held on February 15, 2023. 3I, agenda for the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held on March 15, 2023. 3J, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held February 15th. We, we initially thought we were going to be about $800,000 short, but it ended up being $378,000 short there. Um, with the single tax office, when we're looking at our, our revenues coming in, we're about $1.6 million lower than we were last year. Um, Mr. Boldenberg, can we reach out to the administration and see? We have the emergency declaration in here, but I'm not sure if we actually used the emergency declaration on any um, snow clearing in the in the snowstorm this week. But if we could ask if we use that, in fact, use that emergency declaration. I'll find out, sir. Thank you. And uh, just another takeaway: looking at some of the uh, the pension board meetings, I see that we've some of, we've lost four um, employees of the city. Um, that I didn't realize until looking through those minutes. That's all. Any other members have any comments on uh, third item order? Uh, items, nothing? Okay. If not, received and filed. Uh, do any council members have any announcements at this time? I have a couple. So um, this Saturday, March 18th, the Yukovets. Uh, from 6 to 10 p.m., we'll be having a St. Patrick's Party potluck. Um, and also, in addition to that, uh, they're going to have uh, entertainment by duo and side piece. So feel free to bring some, something to eat and snack and, and enjoy uh, the potluck and the music. Second, uh, St. Patrick's Day. There'll be a ham and cabbage takeout dinner at St. Patrick's Parish. This. Uh, They'll be sponsor a takeout ham and cabbage dinner on Friday, March 17th, from 4 to 7 p.m. in the All Saints Academy School Auditorium. Tickets are $10 per person. They can be purchased at the parish office, or you can send a check in, uh, and they will be mailed to you. Only a limited amount of tickets. Of course, you can get them at the door. Um, and lastly, the Friends of the Poor, our Friends of the Poor, uh, are proud to announce that they will 
have their annual Easter food and basket giveaway. This will take place April 4th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or while supplies last. Uh, this is still a drive-through uh, distribution event. Also, you can walk up. And it will be at the Scranton Cultural Center on 420 North Washington Avenue. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCandrew. Does anyone else have any announcements? Uh, yes, I have an announcement. Um, on Monday, March 20th, uh, there will be applications available for CDBG, HOME, and HESG funding. And the uh, city will be accepting applications until 3 p.m. on Thursday, April 20th. The application process will be handled utilizing Neighborly. And um, OECD is estimating that $2.7 million of CDBG, $700,000 of HOME, and $250,000 of HESG funding will be available. That's all that I have. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd just like to announce, um, I had the honor uh, last week to greet the um, sister city delegation from Balana, Ireland. Um, met with uh, Balana City Mayor Mark Duffy, along with uh, councilors Declan Turnbull and Annie Mae Reap. We welcomed them here, here to City Hall, and they also participated in the St. Patrick's Day Parade over the weekend. and. Uh, it was a wonderful weekend and uh, an honor to have that Irish delegation from our sister city here in Scranton. I also had the opportunity to meet with the former Scranton City Council President uh, who was in town, um, unfortunately, for a funeral. Um, and he was also the former Deputy Mayor of the City of Scranton, uh, Rich Rossi. So um, we had Rich here in City Hall just to kind of come in a little bit and reminisce about uh, the many years that he served the city here in the city hall. So I want to wish him well and uh, sound like he had a great week meeting with some old friends here in the city of Scranton. That's all I have. Fourth order, citizen participation. John Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewan at Scranton. Uh, today is March 16th, 2023. Do you know where your 2021 audit is? Uh, we'll be here next week. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Um, do we know whether or not the mayor is gonna implement the penalty clause? Still do not have an answer on that yet. Um, I'll reach out to her again to see where we're at with that. Even if she does not do that, I would still like to know uh, what the problems were that caused it to be almost six months late beyond the September 30th date that was promised by Kohansky. Um, and what is the status of legislation to appoint a new auditor? I believe that, that I'll address that in fifth order. Tonight. Okay. Um, do we have any movement on the arbitrations for the police and firefighter union contracts? Nothing new since last week. They're both in arbitration and hopefully they're expecting to settle the, the police one, I think by the end of the month, that was the goal. Okay. Well, how about the DPW contract, which was signed on September 13th, 2022, I remember being told here that uh, they had to, you know, send it back and forth between the parties to make sure it was correct. That was six months ago. Don't tell me it takes six months to dot the I's and cross the T's. Mr. Voldemort, can we um, reach out on that again, um, find out what, what's happening? with that contract, which you know has been signed and why we can't get it posted up on our website. If you could reach I out will, to sir. the administration, please. I will. Thank you. And uh, last week I inquired about a $600,000 loan that the city made to Icebox. Icebox has now been sold to Geisinger. What is the status of that loan? Do we get any information? I don't believe we have any information on that at this point. And once again, we will reach out to the administration to see uh, where that's at. If you could reach out to the, the mayor's office. 
I'll get that information, sir. Thank you, Mr. Waldenberg. Now, last night I attended uh, the ethics board and I had some questions with regard to uh, the ethics code, which is a short document, it's only 28 pages. And I was told to come here and ask because uh, of the uh, involvement of the city clerk. So on um, page nine, section four, statement of financial interest, any official or employee of the city or authorities or boards with decision-making authority, including advisory boards, shall file with the city clerk a statement of financial interest for the preceding calendar year by May 1 of each year as defined by the state code of ethics. Any in individual appointed to such a position after May 1 has 15 working days to file the statement of financial interest. All statements must be made available for public inspection and copying at amount not to exceed actual cost. And here is the kicker. All statements must, not may, must be posted on the city's website. So please tell me, where can I find those statements on the city's website? I'm not aware if they're, if they're not on there, then um, I would recommend that we contact the administration and find out if we can get those posted. If, if that is in fact what needs to happen, then we should have them posted on there. That's correct, Mr. King. We received them and we filed them in alphabetical order, time and date stamped. Keep the records in our office, but I'll reach out. Have, have they been, ever been posted on the website in the past? Are you aware? No, they haven't. They haven't, okay. But well, if you could check with the administration and maybe the law department and, and have them check into that and... Uh, yeah, the okay. ethics board says they're not uh, contemplating any amendments to the code at this time, so they should abide by the code or make an amendment, one or the other. But I hope to see those statements in the DPW contract in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sotolanos. Faith Moranis. Faith Moranis, Scranton. <coughs> I'm sure I'm gonna see Joan up here next week and the week after and the week after that asking the same questions with no answers from counsel. Mr. King, she's asked you how many weeks about the mayor endorsing that penalty of 10% for the audit. You keep on saying she hasn't given you an answer. <clears throat> she hasn't. Did you ever say to her point blank, I'm tired of waiting, could you please give me an answer? I've asked her several times. And what, is, what does she say to you when you ask her? They're looking into it. Looking They're into considering it. it. I think you have to be more forceful and get a, a definite answer. They just don't want to, they don't want to do it because one hand washes the other, my opinion. If they do that, then the audit might look different if they penalize them. They can't have that, can they? Okay, now, I asked last week about the overtime at the DPW, Mr. King. And you asked Mr. Volenberg to check into it. So far as of yesterday, he has not heard back. But don't you or Mr. Smurl, who's in charge of DPW on this council, pick up a phone and call the director and say, what are you doing about records for overtime? Why are you not writing anything down as to why you're working overtime? It's not just up to Mr. Volenberg. You, could, you have a phone, you're getting paid over $12,000 a year. Don't you think you and Mr. Smurl could ask yourself? Let me ask you this. How do you feel about that? Do you think they should, do you think they should uh, write down the reasons they work overtime? I'm waiting for I an do. answer. I do, yeah, I do. Do you, Mr. Smurl? Yes, I do. Well, I think you should talk to them about it then instead of sitting up there and not getting answers. Mr. Bolenberg can only do so much. It's up to you now. By next week, I expect an answer on that. That's taxpayers' money. When the mayor ran for election, she said she wanted transparency and accountability. Well, that's gone out the window. So one, one overtime thing was till 9.42 at night. I'd like to know the reason for that. Ask about that one. It was in February. 
9.42 at night. Okay, now, Mr. Schuster, last week you asked about Rubicon and how they're saving the money for the city. I suggest that you call DPW, Chris Smith, Supervisor Refuge, and the director, and have them come in and explain everything about Rubicon. Ask them to bring documents to show if any routes have been reassigned, changed. Let the people in the city know what's going on, not just ask Mr. Bolenberg to find out. Have a caucus with the director of DPW and Chris Smith, the supervisor of refuge. Have him, have them come in and answer all your questions and let the people at home know exactly what's going on down there at DPW. Yeah, are you my, willing to do that? So, so my two questions are how much money has been saved so far? And the answer I assume it is is zero because we haven't heard someone say that yet. And when it comes to the routes, I'm sure that they haven't used it for the routing yet. And I'm sure that's why they haven't been in here. But I'll well, give I them a I still call. think, Mr. Schuster, I still believe, have them come here and say that. Let the people at home know exactly what's going on down there about Rubicon. That's up to the director and Chris Smith, the supervisor, to be taking care of this. Let them come here and answer those questions in public. I don't want to hear what they told you. I want to hear them say it. We're paying them a lot of money. Excuse me, we did receive some answers. I don't know if you saw them yet in an email. They're pretty vague, though. I, I agree. They should be here. We brought them in once before. We'll bring them in again. And cause, we, we cause didn't get the answers that we... I'm we asking you to please bring them in again because people at home want to know what's going on with Rubicon. 62 cities have that, and it works very well. The reason I believe it's not working well is because they're not implementing it. They don't want to. The union guys don't want anything to do with Rubicon. Rubicon. So I absolutely want to hear them say and if you don't bring them in, that just shows there's no transparency here either. So if you can't bring them in, that speaks volumes. Let them answer to the public. Rubicon is a good company. Let's see the DPW utilize it, and you will see huge savings. But let them come here. Let them answer the questions. Let them bring documents to show them, to show the people exactly what's going on, or better yet, show them what's not going on at DPW how they're not utilizing it. I want to see, I think all the people in the city want to know why the routes aren't changed yet, everything. Please bring them in. Thank you. And if you don't bring them in, I'll be back again. And Mr. King, please, and Mr. Smurl, please go and use your telephone and get some answers. Thank you, Mr. Moranis. Uh, David Rinaldi. Thank you. David Rinaldi, 212 Colfax. Um, I want to make a couple comments tonight. I'm sure everybody's seen this. Uh, Geisinger, are they in trouble? I don't know. Are you betting on the right horse? I don't know. Okay. Um, how about this one? Is, uh, is all the property that's not being used for actual medical uh, treatment is that going to be taxed? Are they going to pay city property taxes? Thirdly, um, the third thing that I got from the paper is uh, just the beginning of this week, it was in. Geisinger is still buying properties, right? They bought the property at 1808 Vine Street for $325,000. Now, I don't know why they continue to buy property if they were thinking of pulling out, but, um, you know, I, I don't understand corporations and especially the greed. But, uh, so, I really, I do have a question. Um, I know uh, Councilman McAndrew and Councilman Schuster um, want, or did at the last meeting, want to hold uh, Geisinger to the agreement that they made with the community prior to January. I'm gonna ask the rest of council, the other three, Mr. Smurrow, uh, Mr. King, and Ms. Rothschild, um, what exactly has given you the idea that after spending millions of dollars, Geisinger may pull out? I mean, I, I, I just don't understand this. Um, I do know that there's some movement that's been made, but I'm going to renew my request from last, the last meeting. <clears throat> Have Geisinger come down here in front of the paper, in front of the TV cameras, and let's sit down 
And it's it, because what we've gotten down to now is just the effect they have on Wheeler and the effect that they have on Colfax, their plants. Have them come down, have them sit here, council come in, and we can find out whether or not uh, there is a possibility of them pulling out after all this. I don't think there is. And I personally think that council should um, lobby on behalf of the people who lived in that area for years and years and years and supported this city. Um, to have someone come in here, uh, and uh, especially with the greed that's going on with corporations now, and just take over a neighborhood and just make the property uh, because of, of uh, covenants that they put on uh, just unusable for what it was before. Uh, it, it's not right. Um, but I'll renew my questions. Uh, like I said, I mean, what makes you think that after spending millions of dollars, a, a company who's reporting losses is going to pull out of this thing? And where would they go? Uh, and finally, I do have a question, though. I have a question on uh, the rules that are in the back of the booklet. Um, if someone is speaking after me, um, or I shouldn't say that. Can I yield my time to the person who speaks behind me and give them 10 minutes? And I'd, wanna, and I'd like to know why. And I'd also like to know why answering would take up the public's uh, time before uh, council in the participation. Um, and that's all I have tonight. Oh, I did want to mention one other thing. Um, the city has been calling around to all the municipalities uh, for March, um, asking who are the first women who are in different elective offices, and I commend the city for doing that. We should have a history of that for every community in this county. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rinaldi. Bob Shoemaker. Hi, everybody. My name is Bob Shoemaker. I live at uh, 617 Colfax Avenue with my wife. Um, we have lived in the city for the past 39 years. Um, I'd like to thank the council members uh, for your dedication, uh, taking um, your time for council. I've served on both the uh, Scranton Municipal Rec Authority and then also the Zoning Hearing Board over the years. Um, my wife and I have both worked our entire careers in healthcare. My wife works for Geisinger. She works down at the, the old icebox in physical therapy. I work for a Lehigh Valley Health Network at their new facility in, in Dixon City. Um, I'm here tonight to voice my support for the expansion. Uh, I have friends here. I have acquaintances here. Uh, that's our neighborhood. Uh, I, I, this is not directly across from my house, but I can walk on my sidewalk and see the hospital, and, and that garage is going to come um, back closer towards us. Um, I'm really here tonight to speak. You know, this whole thing, um, and again, I don't live across from this, but um, the, the whole expansion seems to be about the parking garages, and really I'm here just to speak about the uh, access to health care. Um, CMC was built in 1969. You know, at the time we had two hospitals in Scr uh, two other hospitals in Scranton. We had a hospital in um, the Mid Valley. Uh, we had a hospital in Tunkhannock, and we had two in Carbondale. Um, since that time, Mid Valley is closed. Tunkhannock Hospital is closed. Both hospitals in Carbondale have closed. Community Health Systems that owns. Um, both Regional and Moses Taylor are owned by a subsidiary, uh, I think it's Tennessee, and uh, that's Community Health. They own Commonwealth Health Systems. They have closed most, Moses Taylor to patients, uh, inpatients. They have closed the ER. Right now they're shunning patients to Regional. Those extra people that used to go to those facilities are now coming up to CMC. Um, CMC, my understanding is they have about 30 eight ER beds. Um, many of those are in the hallway. And so, and, and on a um, busy time, the average wait at Geisinger is three to five hours for care. Uh, for behavioral health patient, it's about 39 hours till they're placed. Um, I walk the park most mornings. I live in that neighborhood. Um, every day I see hot, uh, ambulances stacked up to get into the ER at uh, Moses Taylor, uh, as many as nine at a time. 
Um, my understanding is the uh, expansion at CMC is going to be uh, more, uh, they want to put the parking garages in so they're not parking on Neog Park's property and they're going to open up uh, the ER, many more beds, and the hope is that they'll also have uh, pediatric uh, health care there, at least a block of rooms for it. Um, CMC is the, uh, the only local uh, trauma facility and the ER is the top of the funnel for the hospitals, okay? That's where those patients come in. You know, there was discussion about them moving the ER to some other place so you didn't have that traffic coming in, but they, they have to be part of the uh, hospital. Um, uh, Geisinger has been moving, that's why they've been moving into the city is they're trying to take all those um, uh, outpatient visits that used to come into the, the hospital and move them downtown so you don't have that traffic, so you don't have those every 15 minute patients, those people driving in. So they, I think my understanding is, if I understand it, that they hope to have more private rooms and, and expand the, the ER. Um, I look at this uh, as an issue for the whole region, okay? Right now, Wayne County has one small hospital, Pike County has no hospital. Northern Monroe County has no hospital. They go to Pocono or come to Scranton. Um, people from all over the area come into Scranton for health care. Um, we're seeing a lot of retirees come into the area. Um, again, I work with a lot of them throughout the Northeast. They come from all these different counties in Scranton. I think it's important as we look to grow the city and we want to bring those retirees in um, that we need a good, good health care. Um, again, this is a regional problem. But, but I am sensitive to how much tax money is lost. Um, you know, so we, we lost these properties um, and, and uh, you know, the, the hospital does provide services and alleviate um, some of the problems with the city, but we lose a lot of tax money. Um, and then uh, again, so I, I think the city government needs to go back and again, revisit the pilot program. Um, I think the old days, the uh, local uh, uh, universities and hospitals, nonprofits, hesitated to dump money into the black hole of the city of Scranton. I think the, the budget is certainly getting better, and I think we're, we could also pilot, uh, uh, target those pilot programs. If, if uh, Guy Singer makes a, a, a pilot donation, put it in that neighborhood, right where it is. Let it stay there. Um, I think that's really important for us. Um, the, um, the neighborhood around CMC, you know, I think has some of the highest taxes probably in the county. Um, and so are they going to take one on the chin? Can I have another minute? The rules are five minutes. I'm okay. sorry, Mr. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Lee Morgan. You know, I thought today that um, I'm not going to spend time talking about ECTV because I have to send a couple more certified letters out. But, um, you know, when you look at what's going on at the CMC and what's happening to the residents of this city, they're serfs. They're just slaves to the government. You know, I guess this is somebody's attorney who came here today, and if I was him, I'd be in a courtroom. So I just have to say that, you know, Maybe he'll pay attention to some of the things going on in the courthouse when I take ECTV to court and show what residents and what citizens in this country have rights. And that, you know, somebody's got to start respecting those rights. And when we talk about hospitals in the city, the Scranton had the, the city of Scranton had the Scranton State General Hospital, hospital on Mulberry Street. As a child, I delivered newspapers in that hospital. They shut that floor by floor down and put private rooms in it and put all new machinery and equipment and that was the best hospital in the city right off the highway here on Mulberry Street. And then of course Governor Casey came in and closed it and played politics with the healthcare system. And we've chased nonprofits out of healthcare as if for-profit hospitals offer us something and they don't. And I'm not for for-profit hospitals. I'm vehemently opposed to them. All money for health care should go back into the system. And when you know how Scranton State General Hospital started, you'll know that they brought a minor home and threw him on his porch. And his wife and another woman started the Scranton State General Hospital from a little building that was there. They had a drug treatment center there also. And you know, I think we have to realize that city government is seriously broken. 
the mayor said she'd come up here to the council and actually lead from the front, and we don't have that. This attorney talked about changing the zoning map in the city. Everybody knew there was something going on when you do something like that because this is play-to-pay politics in this city. And in my opinion, all five of the council members are involved and former council members. Don't forget what happened in 2015 when the council and the mayor removed the peg channel because of the tax group. You don't want to hear what people have to say. That's the problem, and you really don't care what they think as you destroy the city with your legislation, your utter silliness, and lack of respect for residents and, and the rights of Americans to petition their government. And it goes on here every day, and it's really pathetic that we accept it. But you know that one thing that I think everybody should understand is that not one of these council members should be retained. Not one in the next election. The only problem is we need the Republican candidates or independent candidates to come to this podium and tell the residents of the city how they see things differently from you. Because we can't take much more of you. And the mayor locking the downstairs up. I've got a letter coming for her soon, too. We really have to have a discussion about grant money. We have to have a lot of discussions. And me, I'm not afraid to ask questions, and I'm not afraid of answers, and I'm not afraid of obstacles. I've been coming here almost 40 years. And the most pathetic thing that I see in this city is the residents afraid to pick their head up off the ground because you've beat them down so much that they're just, they're not even people anymore. They're just slaves. And the abuse just continues, whether it had to do with the NAOG project, and, and whether it has to do with picking up the bottles and cans from nonprofits and bars, the rules here only, only apply to certain people, but not to everybody. And the government doesn't have our best interest in mind, and it hasn't for a long time. It's all, let's go meet, let's get signatures together, and let's pretend like we're representing somebody. But when you represent yourself, Look at your pool study. The city is down to 76,000 people from 103 when I was a kid. There's not much time left. And you'll play until the fiddler dies. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Ron Elman. Well, Council, as much as this uh, anguishes me, I have to apologize to Council for my chastation last week. Mr. Schuster informed me after the meeting that some of these complaints of mine were being addressed. You know, it's so frustrating to just not to, to see anything done and have anything done. There was a letter in the paper Monday, some people complimented the cold enforcement for a quick response about, on Kapos, about a bunch of slumlords were taking over the place. Well, I had a business uh, uh, there for 20 years. It, 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 slumlords aren't new to the area, but it, I've complained four or five years about a dozen things that every one of them's there today. Purposely, Mr. Olaski's office just purposely avoids all the issues like abandoned cars and so forth that I've been complaining about. And Mr. Sunday, you, you can't allow someone to single you out like he's done me because of personal reasons. That, that, that big, I'm always complaining about him not taking care of my neighborhood. You know, when, 
when he stood on my porch and took a picture of a 20-year-old yard chair with two cases of water on it and calls it rubbish. If I bought it, how could it be rubbish? But there's an American flag been there 20, 25 years right behind it. I guess that's part of his, his rubbish. I'll tell you, the only garbage on my porch that day was Mr. Sunday and his, uh, his, his just constant attacks on me with ticket after ticket after ticket, which Roseanne paid. But let me say one thing. You people, very few of you people out there in council know Ms. Golaski's office lost a lawsuit in 2021 for $285,000 for exactly the same things that he's doing to me, exactly. It's, it's in the paper, it's, it's easy to see. I, I have a lawsuit right there waiting if I want to do something. This man doesn't have any business having a, an office in this city. He's not capable of, of running it. Of course, I have the same feelings about the mayor. I, I, just, I just can't see where, where she, she, she's capable of taking care of the city. It's, I see these pictures of Pittston. You know, you leave Scranton to go to Dixon City, or, or I go to Kingston a lot of weekends. The road is so good. I go down North Main Avenue once or twice a day. There must be 150 cuts. Why are there so many places in the pavement and they're always allowed to be patched with cold patches and all that are gone? There's a, it doesn't make sense. All these other cities you drive through, they have a good street system. Scranton, they just tear up the streets. As soon as they're paved, they even tear them up. Well, again, I thank you for, for do, doing, taking some actions that I didn't know about. And I apologize for being so upset with council, but the rest of I said last week, the rest of them I picked on, I met every word of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elman. So, Mr. Elman, th that's the update. Thank on, you for this. That's the update on the properties that you gave me. Mr. Voldenberg reached out to all the departments to get that for you, and um, he also reached out to the Scranton Police Department about those few abandoned vehicles that are out there, and we haven't heard back about the abandoned vehicles yet, but I hope to hear soon. If you knew how out of character for it is for me to say I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Thanks. It, it ought to be twice as much when I say it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to be heard? Uh, Doris Kolaski, Hill Section resident. Okay, first I want to ask about moving the date for the public hearing. I know that uh, they were going to agree to it. Uh, we need it to be any time after the 25th of the month. And we were also wondering if, uh, if we could have extended time and not be cut off in five minutes for the public hearing because of some presentations. Okay, so you can give me the answer when, I, when I'm finished because I want to address some of the things Mr. Shoemaker had said. Um, oh, one other thing. Where, where can you find out what the caucus is going to be about? Like, I came to the caucus today thinking Don King was going to be here because it was canceled Tuesday and coming Thursday, but there was nowhere to find that out as far as I know, and you can answer me that when I'm done, too. Now, I wanted to say something. The CMC might have started in 1968, but it was the Hanneman Hospital before that because I gave birth there in 1964. <laughs> and the rooms were like, we had to walk down the hall to go to the bathroom and take a shower back then. Okay, so before that, I wanted to say that. 
Uh, the ambulances, I'd like to address the ambulance pile up there because it's not piled up filled to patients. I, I'm up on that side of the park every single day on the hospital side, and I even walk by the ambulance bay a lot with my dogs. And most of the time, even if they're ta unloading a patient like a little bit up the block, which I've only seen once, and wheeling them down, which is a catastrophe, most of those are empty. They, they take the patient in, and then they just keep parking there waiting for their next call. Some of them have now moved their ambulances up in front of the museum along the edge of the park to make room, so somebody must have said something to them about it because they're, not, they're just there waiting for calls. There's a lot of places they can move to to wait for calls. They're not stacked up with patient after patient after patient waiting to be wheeled in. Not the ones I've seen anyway. So that I just want to say, because that, that's what it looks like if you don't know. That it looks like, okay, they're waiting for their waiting and they're waiting, but they, they don't. They go up, they let them out, and then they stay there. Uh, the other thing is, because I feel bad that everybody thinks we're against this approved health care, which we are not against this approved health care. I'd love to see the PA Act review it back. I personally would like to see it down at the uh, ice box, a whole containment of pediatric birthing, neonatal, and everything there so the kids didn't have to wait in an emergency room filled with sick adults and getting knocked back because somebody has a heart attack. I'd love to see a pediatric center all by itself with everything there from, from giving birth to taking care of the neonatal. They just bought that whole ice box. They can easily do that with parking, and it's a standalone facility. Standalone facilities are great because you don't have to wait for absolutely everything. The parking, we're only asking that they only go 45 feet high instead of 10 stories or 8 stories. Now, they agreed to do it on my side of the block. I probably could easily say, okay, we're satisfied, even though we're not really satisfied, but we agreed to compromise. It's the 200 block, and I don't have to be here for the 200 block because I live on the 400 block, but it isn't fair. And if they say it's not long enough because they need all these extra spaces, well, across the street, they tore down already two of the houses that they bought, and they said they're going to make a green space with little, with little benches to sit on and everything. Well, all they're going to do is people are going to be sitting on there to smoke and drop their cigarette butts all over like they do everywhere else around the hospital. Why can't they put a 45-foot parking garage on that side, just maybe for the physicians or something. Then they have that whole block of 45-foot parking garage, and I already spoke to the two people that are here majorly concerned all the time about it. They would agree to, that would satisfy them. I mean, there's so many solutions, but they won't talk to us. And they won't take ideas from us. Okay, so I'm going to stop now because I want you to have your time to answer my questions about the time limit and the new date. Um, I will look into the time limit, but I believe the rules do say five minutes for council chambers when, when we have meetings uh, for speaking. So I believe that would require a change of the rules. Um, as far as um, the caucuses, unfortunately we had that snowstorm, it was an emergency, and then the mayor had requested that we move that up until next week. We probably should have done a better job advertising that those caucuses were moved, so I apologize where, for that. Where, where are the caucuses advertised? Because I don't see it on the website. I might not know where to look. Well, they're usually not advertised. We announced that we announced if we're going to have a caucus oh, here. okay, so yeah. that's what you announced. Okay. Right. Get so. that. Okay. But like, Knowing you were here last week, you would have been expecting it, and we yeah. probably should have done a better job with that. So I apologize for that. That's okay. I mean, you'll know for next. They week. are going to be here next week. Yeah. Um, the, when, when they cancel it, they put in the cancellation. When the mayor puts the cancellation on, she should say, "But there may not be the same agenda." Or something. Costs are moved. Correct. Okay. So Thank then you. the only other thing is, if did you decide on a date that you can move that public meeting to? Um, I can address that in fifth order. I'm sorry, what? I'll address that during fifth order. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who would like to be heard? Tom Coyne, Manuka. 
As of council rules, the president has at any time the ability to extend beyond five minutes any of the public speaking time. That's actually in the rules themselves. So a person can request from the audience an extension, and it is up to the president of council to decide whether or not it is legitimate for the for Thank extension. you. I haven't decided it yet. It is, all, it is also part of the uh, addressed in the Sunshine Act purely for the reason they understand with financials before city in some meetings that they do require an extended period of time and they're asked to consider and you're asked to consider that just because of the scope of the issues. Getting on to a uh, different subject. We now have purchased our electric cars, 10 of them. Looking at the base price with no extras on them, that's $300,000 for the electric cars. Looking at the charging stations, the charging stations required for them will run about another $200,000, give or take. Looking at the walkability study that's still in its study form, we have over $130,000 spent. So right now we have $630,000 spent but we can't afford a pool. We can afford cars for employees. We can, we can afford studies that have not moved forward and multiple bills on it, but we can't afford a swimming pool. It's a shame that money can be found for everything else except for the residents. As of this DPW emergency, is DPW incapable of handling snow removal in the city? We've looked at it right now. We have emergency orders to multiple people, yet we have a DPW department which is supposed to respond to these, these actions in the city. It's an emergency put out for all hands, and I understand that there should be a procedure before it needs to be an emergency to address snow removal if it happens to be larger but I don't see a snow event, which really did not happen, becoming a snow emergency to the point that DPW is not competent enough to do their job. They're paid to do that, and I know DPW is competent in trash and a lot of other issues. I'm just confused at why at this particular issue, DPW is unable to handle snow in the city of Scranton. Looking at Geisinger, the losses in the paper. Well, I take that with a grain of sand because oftentimes losses are done from profits from the other year. And if you made $500,000 last year and you made $300,000 this year, it's a loss of $200,000. It's not a loss, it's just a reduction in revenue. And obviously from COVID, there was a gigantic boost in revenue. So there should be an expected compensation the other direction. Lack of staff is an issue on moving people through the hospital. Hospitals do not provide services. Hospitals are paid for services. They are not a charity handing it away for free. Every person in there does not get provided services. They pay for it, whether it's insurance, out of pocket. It's a business. Zoning at this point, we are now looking at an inevitable slide to approve the zoning as it is and ignore public input. The writing's already on the wall for this. The positions have already been taken. All that I can suggest at this point is the people who oppose this get together and start a referendum. I believe it's 45 days that there's a period where input has to be done, then after signing another 30 days. The total referendum number they need is 1,954 registered voters. With 75 days, they need only capture 27 voters a day to stop this bill no matter what happens and push it off to November for, for negotiations. Now is the time to stop City Hall and this organization from moving forward by putting it to the voters and striking the power out and putting in the possibility of future negotiations because I think we're going nowhere here. Thank you, Mr. Coyne.
Good evening. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton, taxpayer. Uh, is that speaker a permanent fixture there? I hope so. It's a lot easier to hear back there. Is it helping? Uh, that speaker. No, I'm saying is it helping back there? It's permanent. Good. I didn't it's say that. I'm, I'm asking, is it helping? Oh, yes. Better. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, last week, I, uh, well, I, I really shouldn't have, but I stopped by to uh, a little passing comment to somebody, and then the next thing I know, I'm getting poked and yelled at and hit with a paper, and, uh, you know, it's over with, and I don't go any further, but please don't do that to me again, because I will nip it in the bud at the magistrate's office. Not that I was injured, but if I had done that to a, a female in a thoracic cavity, it could be construed as something entirely different, you know? So I'm, that's all I'm gonna say on that. Uh, now, the subject of uh, veterans getting some trash removed, I think they did enough for the country. And in a case of veterans, organizations, we can afford them a few amenities. Uh, I was, I heard of Vietnam in uh, third grade, and after I graduated high school, I'm worried about the draft, you know, and I didn't get drafted, and I'm no big hero, and uh, at that point, you really weren't doing yourself a favor by volunteering. So, you know, the point being that we can extend a small amenity there. Um, now, a lot of the subject on Guy Singer is up, and uh, the uh, pilots, well, pilots on average, if people are willing to pay them, are about 8% of the property tax that would be paid uh, in Pennsylvania. And uh, that's just grand, but that doesn't pay the bills, not with 40% tax exempt. And I have contended for years that the state of Pennsylvania should take up for their constitution and replace a goodly amount of that tax money that's missing from our budgets. And uh, that's all there is to it. Um, if same people can't keep paying more and more with more and more property going up. And by the way, with the 40 foot limit, I think, I hope I'm not making anybody mad, but it's gonna make hospitals and uh, this hospital all the more hungry for all the more sprawl, to sprawl out further in the hill section. So that's just the, uh, we got a triple-bladed sword there, nobody's happy. Uh, walkability. I think at this point, you should use a supermajority to shut it down. I can only imagine tearing the stoplights out of the intersections and everything else. I was almost run down right out here. A guy came from the uh, west side, uh, west lane of, uh, of uh, Washington and turned up Mulberry Street in a wide turn out of a sports car and he was happy as all in his cruise. And I had to run out of the way and I'm not too good at running nowadays if you haven't noticed, so. Uh, but as far as that walkability business, that guy is nothing but a snake oil salesman. And it's a, it's, it's a real estate agent's pipe dream. That's all it is. I don't wanna see one more coin going into that. And that is also, I don't get to say what tax money or how it's spent. You know, my tax money is probably only pennies, but it's on average, but it's being handed to this guy 
with an illogical idea. So please. Thank, thank you, Mr. Dobson. Just shut it down. Shut it down. Thank you. Have thank a you. good night. You too. I'm not picking on anybody up there. You guys got here later. Is there anyone else who'd like to be heard? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Smurl, do you have any motions or comments? Yes, Mr. King. Um, everyone knows for the past um, three weeks we have not been collecting recyclables um, from businesses and nonprofits. Um, but I still see um, recyclable cans and stuff lined up in the streets in front of businesses. And um, uh, I, I don't know, Mr. Voldenberg, is council can uh, do an advertise or is it uh, to the city of Scranton to advertise that we are no longer doing the business. Since we have been picking them up for years, um, I think everybody's been accustomed to them. And um, maybe we can do something just to um, advise the citizens we're not doing it anymore. I'll look into that, sir. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Small. Mr. Schuster, do you have any motions or comments? I have a few comments. Um, some of the things I, I think I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, um, I mentioned in caucus tonight, about the ARP plan, um, I, I do believe, um, you know, with some of the uh, recent um, information coming out about how to use the ARPA money, um, there is a possibility to take a look at the plan as it is and, you know, update it, um, see what's not relevant anymore. And I think we should reach out to answer and, and possibly Ms. Cipriani to come in, review the plan and see what we can, um, if there's anything that needs to be updating or changed in, in the plan as we see it right now. Um, I, I brought up the pool at McDade and uh, the, council, the county using some of this money and I think it's something that we definitely need to look at to revisit this plan. So if we could reach out to uh, Ms. Cipriani and possibly answer to see if they can come in to give us an update on where it's going and if it could be revised. Um, brought up on public comment tonight and I asked about Rubicon. I, I asked several questions about have we had any updated routes? Have we saved any money with Rubicon? Can we also reach out to um, DPW, possibly Chris Smith or Scott Petrofis and see if we can get an update on Rubicon if we have any, if we've done any routing with the system and if we've saved any money on this with the system specifically? We did get an answer today, Mr. Schuster. Okay. But I do have to follow up on some points. Okay, I'll take a look I at will. it. So the answer came in today? Yes. We did, this okay. morning. Okay, thank you. I'll take a look at that and maybe I'll respond to that email and see if, um, if we need to go from there then. That's not what you want to hear, by the way. All right, <coughs> thank you. Um, so maybe we reach out and see if they could come in to give us an update. Um, I did see an article about the, the EV cars that we got. Um, I did ask questions last week or the week prior. Um, if we could, ask those questions again. Where are these cars being stored? Where are these cars being charged? Which employees are assigned to these cars? I think we got a response on that as well. Yeah? Yeah, we, we did, did, sir. Okay. Um, they've said where they're being stored? It did, yeah. Okay. I'll put yeah. the Sorrenti Center, I believe. Okay. The, the, the issue that's up at the Sorrenti Center is, though, there's no charging stations for them to be charged. So they have to be charged somewhere. They're going to be stored in a garage. Okay, so if we could revisit those questions, where are the cars going to be stored? Which employees are going to be assigned those vehicles? And then to add on to that, are we paying for the charging and storing of any of these vehicles? How long is the lease? And um, do, does the administration realize that this brand and make and model of car has been discontinued as of this November? Um, and then just to follow up, uh, we have a new engineering coordinator. I did ask about taking a look at the resume and if they, that was going to be sent down to council. I think there was a slight answer in the newspaper, but um, if we could just revisit that question, if we're going to get a look at the resume and if it's going to be sent in front of council for approval. I will, sir. Thank you. Dr. Rothschild. Uh, yes. Uh, first, I want to bring up uh, Something that I mentioned a few weeks ago, someone who contacted me about a missing permit parking sign um, across from 1202 Vine Street, and I don't believe that it's been replaced yet. So if we could please check in with DPW about replacing that sign. Mr. Voldenberg. I'll get a time frame on that, Doctor. Thank you. And on the su subject of permit parking signs, we had also received communication from a resident who had parked over on Quincy Avenue nearby Moses Taylor to go 
visit someone there at the hospital and uh, they said that they did not see any visible permit parking signs and then they received a ticket, uh, parking ticket and then when they took a look to see where the permit parking sign was, there was one down at the end of the block but there was only one on the block. So um, not sure if there were additional <coughs> permit parking signs there originally and I, I know this was sent to the whole of council, so I, I'm not sure if this has already been forwarded, but I wanted to uh, make sure to bring that to your attention as well. I referred that to the police department. Okay, perfect. And um, there was a, a question from uh, someone who had spoken about whether or not Geisinger would pull out of their plans uh, and and move elsewhere. I I really can't speak to what their contingency plans are. Um, I do know that there are those empty lots across from Temple Israel, which I, I mentioned last week too. And so, you know, people do buy up a lot of property and then plans change and they might not actually build on it. And I would hate to see that happen and just see vacant lots, which was a point that I did bring up last week too. And, um, you know, they, I think that it is a possibility that they could take the loss and decide to to move elsewhere. Say that it, you know, it, like somewhere where they have a bigger a bigger lot, they can make a larger hospital. Um, they, I know they have more space up at um, Geisinger, Wyoming Valley, and uh, they've you know added on to to that hospital there uh, and added services. But they had the space, and um, I don't think that they would. I don't know if they would find that in the city of Scranton or not. So I don't know that I'm willing to take that risk because I, I do think that it's important to have those services within the city. Uh, so that's that's all that, that I know in, in terms of that. That's, I think, all specu speculation uh, at this point. So I don't have a concrete answer on what, what they would do in the event that this is not um, passed as it's proposed. That's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rothschild. Uh, Mr. McAndrew? Uh, yes. So um, also referring to caucus, I agree with Mr. Schuster that we need to know if there's any, if there has been any change in criteria with regards to utilizing the ARPA funds that we're not aware of and sh or maybe should be aware of. Um, a bunch of people are hired using that fun using them funds, coordinators. We also have uh, a private contractor that's supposed to help us uh, manage that money and disperse that money. So it, it, I have an issue if some of the criteria change based on what was discussed in caucus and we're not aware of it. So I don't think we should just ask to come in. We, we should really say, please come in, and or not even please, just come in, bring us up to date. Uh, if the county ha knows something that we don't, uh, then shame on them and all the people we're paying to, to handle this money. And then secondly, so the, the ladies at uh, Westernfield Pool, they're still reaching out to me and they're still having issues and I give them credit for, for being diligent and, and fi fighting the fight over there. But their concern now is, and you know, they're very patient. So they're still having troubles with lifeguards and that's fine. We all understand that the kids are at school, whatever. So all they want is when a lifeguard calls off, maybe set up a one call or a robo call for them because they, they come to the pool and it's closed or they're, they're, they find out at that moment. So could you please ask Mr. West if, you know, and this was an idea from, from one of the swimmers and they have great ideas. So maybe they can take their name and information, they're there or try to get there weekly and then generate a list and then do a one call to these ladies so they don't have to drive and then find out that the pool is closed. I'll take care of it, sir. Okay, and that is all I have. Thank you, Mr. McAndrew. Um, I have some follow-up from last week. Uh, we mentioned about the audit. I did bump into the business administrator, Larry West, on the way in here, um, and I got a call from the mayor pretty much at the same time indicating that they, they should they expect to have a draft of that audit by tomorrow and hopefully be able to get it to council on Tuesday, by Tuesday, March 21st. Um, it's been a long time coming, so uh, we'll look forward to finally having the uh, 2021 audit here. Uh, Matt Dominis, uh, the city finance director, advised uh, that his office is in regular contact with Clifton Lawson and Allen, the new auto firm for the city. 
to help to start uh, the 2022 audit in mid-April. We'll send quarterly reports to the city. New auditor will conclude the FYE 2022 audit by August 31st, 2023 in advance of the September 30 deadline. Foster and Foster actuary for uh, the Gatsby 75 audit has agreed to report regular updated information to the new audit firm in 2023. Um, Joan had, there was a request made to both the city treasurer and the STO to uh, place delinquent city real estate taxes on the city website. So we're, um, that request has been submitted. So we'll stay on top of that until we get all that uh, updated. Faye Ferrana said uh, a request was submitted to both DPW and the business administrator's office related to DPW supervisor overtime for 22 and 2023. Um, we will probably reach out to them again and just see where we're at with that. If we could, uh, Mr. Wollenberg, and perhaps we'll make a phone call ourselves. Um, Al Young, um, follow up for him. The LIPS and zoning departments followed up on his pending building permit a permit will be issued. Uh, Mr. Young was given the update via phone by Zoning and City Council office. Uh, there were some earlier, oh, also uh, Doris, um, right now the schedule is to uh, vote on sixth order on the zoning ordinance tonight and then it's expected to be tabled. Um, next week at the caucus we're supposed to have Don King um, the city planner come in and give an overview of the, uh, the new zoning ordinance. Um, presently, we have um, <clears throat> a city council public hearing on the zoning schedule for April 11th. I will reach out to um, both the city solicitor and, and discuss this with our, uh, our solicitor for city council and see if that's still appropriate date since um, this city council meeting was moved by two days. I just want to make sure that we're following the proper timelines. Um, and under the existing timeline, we were scheduled to uh, have a final vote on the zoning ordinance on April 18th. So uh, if there are changes to that that need to be made, I will announce them next week on March 21st. Um, earlier, a speaker um, indicated Let's see, I wrote it down exactly what was said. That um, all five council members up here are involved in pay to play. Um, I take great exception to that. Um, I'm appalled at an accusation like that because I can guarantee you there's nobody sitting up here that's involved in pay to play. Um, <clears throat> so that was a blatant, blatant lie. So um, I take great exception to that accusation. Um, furthermore, <clears throat> he indicated that all five of us sitting up here should never be reelected and don't deserve to serve on this council. I can tell you, at least from my perspective, I never ran for council to try to get reelected. I have no, there will not be a single vote I take in these chambers that's based on me getting reelected. That I can guarantee you. Guarantee you, I will not take a vote based on, oh, this is, I better vote this way because they might not reelect me. I will never do that. I don't care if I get reelected. I care about trying to do what I believe is in the best interest of the city of Scranton, period. It might not be what, I mean, there's times we have three, two votes up here, sometimes a four, one vote. So that's what council's all about. We're, we're, we should disagree on things. I believe though that this council is interested in doing the best we can to improve the city of Scranton. Sometimes we disagree on how to get there, but I can guarantee you that every one of my colleagues up here on this council care about the city. We want to do what's best interest of this city, and you know we're doing the very best that we can um, as, as a part-time job. And I know for a fact that each one of these individuals spend time away from these chambers on the phone answering emails, making phone calls, stopping out, meeting with residents. Um, so there's a lot of time and effort that goes into this. And I will tell you this, this is my first time sitting in an elected office. Um, it, I respect anybody, after sitting here now, I respect anyone that's willing to put their name on a ballot and get up and serve um, the public here because it, it, it can at times be a thankless job, but 
to me, listen, I can take criticism all day long. That's fine. But at the end of the day, I'm interested and willing to put myself on the line to try to do what I can, at least in four years, to try to improve uh, the city of Scranton. And that's all I have to say about that one. Um, thank you. 5B, for introduction and ordinance, creating and establishing <clears throat> special city account number, as noted, entitled FSA City Employees to accept and disperse funds received from city employees participating in the city's flexible spending account program that permits city employees to use pre-tax money to pay for eligible health care expenses. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question. Sorry. On the question, um, I just wanted to see, there, there wasn't too much background information here on this, but if we could reach out just to see where, where is this account is going to be set up and who's managing the account. I don't know if it's a third party that's going to be managing the account or if it's something that we're going to be doing in-house. I'll ask those questions, sir. Thank you, Frank. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it and so moved. 5C, for introduction to resolution, authorizing the creation of a flexible spending account benefit program for employees of the City of Scranton. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. <coughs> Second. <coughs> On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction of resolution, appointment of Kyle Evans as a member of the Scranton Housing Board of Appeals. Kyle Evans's term is effective upon execution of the resolution and shall expire on November 30th, 2025. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. On the question. On the, qu on the question, uh, I'm just, I'm really happy that we were able to find another member so that we could fill the um, Housing Board of Appeals. Uh, it's, an, it's an important role and um, I'd like to thank Councilman Smurl in his, in his part too um, in, in helping to find this candidate. Thank you. I agree and I know Kyle has uh, spent at least 14 years working at uh, Cock Sheet Metal um, and he's got vast experience in working also up with the uh, East Mountain Neighborhood Association, very active in the city. So I think we're fortunate uh, to have him uh, agree to want to serve on this committee. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A. Reading by title, file the council number 54, 2023, an ordinance establishing regulations and restrictions for the location and use of lots, land, buildings and other structures, the height, number of stories, and size and bulk of buildings and structures, the density of population, off-street parking, and similar accessory regulations in the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and for said purposes, dividing the city of Scranton into districts and establishing the boundaries thereof, prescribing certain uniform regulations for each such district, and providing for administrative enforcement an amendment of its provisions in accordance with the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code 53 PS section 10101 at SEC as amended. If we're reading by title of item 6A, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. I second. On the question? On the question, just to keep my um, vote uniform, I. I We'll be voting no tonight on this. I do want to thank uh, the other council members beforehand for um, taking a look at uh, some of the amendments I made for uh, solar ordinances. I think that uh, I'd like to see that added here, um, as well as the, the uh, amendments for the height restrictions on Colfax Avenue. Um, I, d I do think the, again, I don't want to see hospital expansion stop. I don't want to see this 
project stop, and I do want to see zoning pass for the whole city, but I do believe the expansion will occur whether the height restriction is in place or not. And I mean, it still gives the, uh, the hospital the opportunity to go in front of the zoning board for a variance. Um, with that being said, Frank, I got one more request for you. We've, we've spoken about the HUP test. Um, there was an article in the Times over the last couple of days about a hospital losing its tax exempt status. Can we check in with the administration to see uh, what the timeline is for the HUP test? I'll do that, sir. Thank you. On the question, um, it, this is going off of some things that I mentioned uh, last week, and I've continued to ask questions to, um, to find out more. Uh, about the expansion and their plans. And I, I mean, the, the debate seems to come with the parking if they'll have enough spots if they don't have uh, the height on the 200 of Colfax. Now, I don't think, even though they would have had like the 100 feet maximum to, to put a building, I don't think they ever planned on putting two 100 foot parking garages. That would be much more than they ever needed. Um, but I think because of the change from civic to institutional zone on the 400 block of Colfax, uh, the lower height of that would have pushed the other height higher on that garage. Otherwise, they could have had, you know, maybe two 60-foot garages. I don't know. So um, I think this is, uh, in in their mind, the compromise for for them, but also with the goal of getting parking out of Nayog Park. Uh, where you know they they don't feel like there's enough safety for their employees uh, walking to the hospital from from that parking lot um, and and the convenience factor too, especially for the other lot that they lease in Dunmore. Um, and I think uh, it also needs to be a consideration about safety for pedestrians. So a lot of people who visit Nayok throughout throughout the week through the weekends, um, I know in my experience too, walking across from the one section of, of the park uh, and, and walking across the street near the Everhart, that there's not really an obvious place for pedestrians to walk or a sidewalk, you're walking where the, the vehicles are, are traveling. So it would be less traffic going in and out of Nayog. I think if they're not able to get that, that building height on the second garage and to have that remain in the civic zone, that then parking would need to remain in Nayog and then potentially elsewhere as well. So I think that's where um, where a large part of the issue lies. So I just wanted to uh, point that out on the on the question of this. Okay, so on the question, I, I my position, I remain uh, I remain a no. And 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 I, like I said last week, I am not against progress. I'm not against uh, advanced health care, but. A compromise of 55 feet, take it from 100 down to 45. It's the distance between me and the back wall. It's the distance between maybe me and the ceiling. I think that is a, that compromise is, is, is minimal, and I don't think it affects the $280 billion expansion. I don't think it halts the expansion at all. The distance between me and the ceiling or me and the wall. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to table item 6A. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second to table item 6A. This ordinance is being tabled until a public hearing can be held. The public hearing will be held on April 11th which follows the County Planning Commission's requirement that City Council wait 45 days before holding public hearing. That date is 45 days from when the proposed ordinance was sent to the County Planning Commission in February. On the question, on the question I will say that since the time frame, the 45 days began right after uh, planning had passed it and it was sent, that I believe uh, that would allow us to continue uh, with the date of uh, April 11th for the public hearing. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved.
Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, file the Council number 52, 2023, amending the rent rental ordinance of 2022 by extending the 2023 rental license deadline to September 15, 2023. What is the recommendation of the chairman for the committee, the committee on Community Development? As chairperson person for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. On the question, um, Frank, another, another request from you. Could council get an update on the escrow account that has been set up with the rental ordinance? Um, just an overall uh, update on, on has the escrow account been set up? Has there been any money put into the escrow account? generalities like that. I'll investigate, sir. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, resolution number 211-2023 ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to Tree Pennsylvania PA Urban and Community Forestry for 20 bare root trees from the bare root trees program to be planted on streets and parks owned by the city and nonprofit organizations. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Eight A. Uh, this this uh, ordinance is Mr. King. Is I'm sorry. We have to finish the the vote on oh, that. Oh, I apologize, I apologize. Thank you. I jumped too quickly. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. Thank you. Eighth order, 8A, file the council number 53, 2023. This is the ordinance uh, is establishment of an environmental advisory council for the city and it was tabled until further information can be received. I expect that um, the mayor will be coming in for caucus on Tuesday, March 21st um, to give us more further information on that. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn.